we are raised with Christ. We become like Him because we are raised with Him. And our perspective changes. You know, like Paul when he was on the road, he believed that he was doing the right thing. And along the way, he encountered God and he was blinded to his old way and his eyes were opened, if you know the story, to a new way. He completely changed when he encountered Jesus. The same applies to us. Good morning, how are you doing? Good to see you all, I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. Before I get into my, what I've prepared this morning, God prepared something in my heart during worship, and it was the word qualification. And uh, who here has got a qualification? Okay, got a qualification. And I felt like God saying, what is the best qualification you can have? What is the best qualification? Lawyer? Actuarial scientist, doctor, what is, come on, what is the best one? To be a child of God. That is the best and the only qualification that really counts. And if you felt that you're not qualified, I want to tell you this morning that you are qualified in Christ. If you want to be a doctor, be in Christ. He's the best physician the world has ever seen. If you want to be a lawyer, be in Christ because he is the judge. He is the best lawyer ever. If you want to be really clever, be in Christ because he is all-knowing. If, if you want to be like in construction, be in Christ. He's the creator. Isn't it amazing? We can be qualified in all these things if we just accept who Christ is in our lives. We have access to all of that when we are qualified in Him. The best qualification. So if you have felt disqualified, remember this morning that you are qualified in Christ. Father, I thank you this morning that we, we don't stand as disqualified people, but as people qualified in you. Lord, that there is none like you in all the heavens and all the earth, Lord, and that we are a blessed people. Lord, that we would represent you well this morning and in all the days of our lives, Lord, that all that would come to know us would come to know you, that this place would be overflowing by our witness. In Jesus' name. You know, faith comes through hearing the word. You know, that word, that, that word means the, the living word. Now, let's, for a moment, remember that Jesus is not dead. So the words he speaks to us are living. And when we, when we grab a hold of what Jesus' words are, they are good for us. And our faith rises when we hear Jesus talk to us. So we're going we're gonna to get straight into it, but I just... We, if you don't know, we're in the middle of our series or getting towards the end of our series called In Christ. And uh, who doesn't know that we're in that? Because <laughs> we've been at it for quite a while now. It's been good. It's been really good. It's been, it's been challenging for us as a, as a preaching team, but it's been so good. There's so much depth to it. And um, it kind of tells us who we are, but it also tells us who we are in God and, and God's desire for us to be a part of, part of him and to be in him. And uh, so as a brief overview, Stephen started off the series with, there is therefore no, no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Aaron preached, we are made alive in Christ. Yes. Alexander Fenter, in Christ, our King. Keegan, in Christ is your home. Right, eh? Uh, Caleb, there is a new uh, covenant in Christ. Mel preached last week, grace to do good works in Christ. And Sean, last week in the evening, made to love in Christ. Today, I'm going to be speaking about you are a new creation in Christ. You know, that, that, that phrase, in Christ, 
is mentioned 165 times in the New Testament. It's kind of more than the words that I used in my art exam in matric. It's a lot. It's a lot of words. And you know that Paul's, most of those words, most of the time, Paul is the one that mentions that phrase. And his ministry was mainly to the Gentiles, who are us. So he's talking to us. He's trying to tell us. It's an old concept. It's a concept that was used in the Old Testament, the phrase to be in something, like in the ark or in the, um, the cities of refuge. It's an old concept that Paul then uses so that those that at that time would understand what it means to be in something, so to be in Christ. So they knew what it meant. But I'm going to just take a moment now just to speak about the, the cities of refuge in the Old Testament. So the Israelites, they, they leave Egypt and they, they've, they've been in the desert for a number of years and they, they come to the promised land. And God says that when you go into the promised land, I want you to set up six cities, cities of refuge, three on this side of the river and three on that side of the river. In the east and the west, these six cities. And the cities are for people that have inadvertently killed someone. So if you made a mistake and you ended up killing someone, you would run like mad to a city of refuge. Because in that city, you'd go to the elders or the, or the, the leaders of the city and you would say to them, please hear my case. And they would include you into the city. They would protect you. You would be like protected game for a while, while you awaited your trial. While they gathered all the information, then they, then they, they would have a trial and they'd see if you were guilty or not guilty. If you didn't make it to the city, you would be slacked by your pursuing enemy. You would be like running like mad to the city because you knew there was refuge there. You could take refuge in that city. And, um, you know, so you think like, oh, so, you know, I'm not someone that's murdered someone. I haven't done anything that bad. Why would I need a city of refuge? Well, let me um, use Jesus' words here for a moment just to highlight the importance of why we should be in a city. You've heard it said to the people long ago, do not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Okay? Did you get that? None of you have been angry with your brother, right? Eh? Not ever. Not ever. Again, anyone who says to his brother, Raka, which means like, hey, empty head. Okay, that's weird, but anyway. I think it was an insult in those days. Hey, empty head is answerable to the Sanhedrin. But anyone who says, you fool, um, some people have said that a few times, will be in danger of the fire of hell. New Testament, those are red letters. If you had a red letter Bible, Jesus talking, he's saying that not just if you murder someone, but if you've even been angry with someone, and he goes into a whole lot of other different things. You know, you've heard it said that if you committed adultery, but now if you look upon another man's wife, you've committed adultery. And he goes on. We need a city of refuge. We need to run like mad to find refuge because otherwise judgment is upon us. We will be judged for the things. You know, judgment day is coming. There is going to be a day of judgment. But it's nothing for us to be afraid of if we are in Christ. Isn't that good? Yes. So, it's a good place for us to find refuge and find hope if we're in Christ, that we might be exonerated of our sins and the things and our thoughts that we have had about other people. You know, without a city of refuge, we would be hunted down and we would be found guilty and the judgment would be upon us. But in Christ, 
we are found not guilty. That's a big thing. You know, there, there, there's six cities, and I, you know, I, when I read the scriptures, I, I sometimes wonder why there weren't seven. Because if there were seven, like seven's like the perfect number, hey? But six speaks about humanity. God says six cities, because six is for us. The cities are for us. Even in our, our wrongdoing, God pre, uh, creates a space for us, a place of refuge for us, six cities. And their names have significant meaning as well. So there are six cities, um, Kadesh, Shechem, Hebron, Beza, Ramoth, and Golan. Golan. Kadesh means holy place. When you, when you find yourself in the city of Christ, he is holy. He's the holy place. He's the one we nestle into. He allows us to come into his holiness and protects us. Shechem means a strong shoulder. Strong. He's a strong place. It's not a weak place. It's not like, you know, we have to duck and dive. He stands strong. We get into that city of Christ. It's a strong place for us. Hebron means fellowship. When we come into Christ, we enter into a place of fellowship with others. It's a good place for us to be. He calls us into himself, and in himself we have fellowship with other believers. Um, Beza doesn't mean beer. You're like, hey, let's have a Beza. It's not the city where you get beers. Caleb? You might get drunk in the spirit, but definitely not from beer. Beza means strong hiding place, a place for us to hide, to run away from the things that we've done in the past and from the, our pursuing enemy. And uh, Ramoth means high place. You know, God seats us in high places with him, above all things, to reign and rule, to have our being, to oversee to have dominion with him in heavenly places. And Golan means enclosure for captive, captives. We are captivated by Christ. When we're in Christ, we are captivated by him. You know, for eternity, we're just going to be like captivated by his glory. He's ever increased. We, would never, we won't even be able to see the end of his glory. I was once told, like, how can you explain what eternity looks like? And how is it that we'll just be worshiping for eternity? I was once explained like this, like, you know when you're walking in the mountains and you come around a corner and you see this beautiful valley and everything's just amazing, you go, oh. it's like that. We're just going to be captivated by Jesus. He says, oh, my word. It's like so much more than we can even imagine. Can't, can't even comprehend but it's a great feeling. We're going to be captivated, and he wants us to be captivated by him, just as the worship team did for us this morning. He, they, they represented a, a captivating space for us to be in his presence. <clears throat> but you know this, if, if you were running to a city of refuge, you would surely want to know the signposts to get there. They, don't, they didn't hide the cities. They put big signs up, city of refuge, a big arrow. This is the way to go to find a city of refuge. What do you think a good sign is for us? The cross. The cross is our sign, our signpost to find our city of refuge, our place to be found in Christ, when we see the cross, we know we have a place to be in. Isn't that beautiful? We are not condemned. We are not found guilty. We are guilty, but we are not found guilty because Jesus takes on all our guilt on our behalf. So my key scripture this morning is 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, 
the new has come. So I want to summarize our In Christ series so far in one sentence. Bear with me. We are, we are not a condemned people, but we are made alive in a new kingdom, one that is like our home with completely new rules where we get to do good things in love. That's where we are at the moment. So now, a new creation. We've been created anew. And if you follow on from that scripture, verse 20 says, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. We get to carry Christ wherever we go to represent to the world what it means to be in Christ. We are a new creation, and we are now Christ's ambassadors because we represent Christ to the world. And the truth, the truth that God pursues us relentlessly, that he wants us to be in his presence. When we are in Christ, we're in God's presence. You know, I don't know if you like me, but I like a good transformation story. You like it? I like it. You know, when you see a little puppy, distressed, full of fleas, being neglected, like in the bush, maybe on the dump, you know, yelping, crying, any human being come next to it, whimpering away. Anyone feel that? No. <laughs> okay, all right, it's just me. And, and, and someone comes up to the puppy and, and gets a hold of it, takes it home, gives it a bath, gets rid of all the parasites and things, cleans it up, gives it some good food, puts it into a family, and then you see, like, two months later, this dog bounding around, enjoying the life that it's now been given. Those are good stories, eh? Or even like a house, a derelict house. If you're a builder like me, you see an old house and you think, wow, imagine what that could look like, how you could transform it, like put some new windows in, and maybe a deck out the front, a swimming pool, a nice place for people to come to, lick a paint, a little bit like Shiloh, hey, when we did some work to Stephen and Hannah's place in the Berg. Those are good stories. You know that we that story? We are that story that your testimony is exactly that story. You were once one way and now you're a different way. People want to see those stories. Just like they want to see the story of a little puppy being rescued, they want to hear your story, your story of transformation, that you were one way and now you're another way. That is my story. If you've heard my testimony, I, I was... I was one way. I'm not going to say too much about that, but if you want to hear about it, you can go and listen to my testimony online. It's titled, My Life, His Plan. And the reality is, is that I was a certain way. And I came to know Jesus at a, like a youth event. And it was amazing. I was like super pumped. I, 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 just, I just wanted to know Jesus more, and, and I, I gave my life to him, and I was, I was so excited about it. But nothing really changed. I wasn't, I wasn't different. I just, I just wanted it, I, and, I, and I accepted Jesus. It wasn't until many years later when I received the Spirit of God that my life changed. My life changed. I was an angry, frustrated uh, young man who, by the Spirit of God, turned into this soft, amazing husband. <laughs> You know, if, if, is there anyone here that was at school with me? No. Maybe, maybe they still remember me like I was at school. That's why they're not in our, in our church. Because <laughs> if you knew me at, at what I was like at school, you, you wouldn't really think that I would be up here right now preaching. I was an angry, aggressive young man. 
Jesus has changed my life. I am a different being to what I used to be like. I am that puppy that is now an old dog. But my life is different. It is completely different. I'm a different being. I'm a new creation in Christ. And it's a beautiful story, and it's my story. The world needs to know my story, but it also needs to know your story. I want to get on to a few little things now, and then we're going to close quite early, because I want, to, I want us to, to grab a hold of what God has for us, and that is to grab a hold of the transformation story that is yours. The old is gone and the new has come. But that doesn't just mean for individuals. It also means for a grouping of people. In fact, it means for all people. In Ephesians 2, I think, Christ, in Christ we are, we are made new. But in Christ we become one nation. We are not just Jews and Gentiles. We are now one nation. We are now children of God when we are in Christ. There's no separation between nations. We are one tribe in Christ. So yes, we have our own transformation story, but also we have a corporate transformation story, which is a great representation to the other nations of the world, that, we, that you get included in one nation. You know, the old was a rebellious state. The new are, we are trophies of grace. The old, uh, you, you, get, you had to defend yourself, but in the new, Jesus defends you. In fact, he stands in your place. This is the new. The old is led by the law, but the new is by grace we are saved and no longer bound, but we are free. The old requires self-righteousness. The new, we are made righteous by Christ. In the old, we are destined for destruction. But in the new, we are destined for glory. You know, in your new state, and this is from just one, one verse before, 2 Corinthians 5.16, it says this. Regard no one by the flesh or from a worldly point of view. For from now on we regard, regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ this way, we do so no longer. And that's a change of mindset. It's a change of the way that we see things. Because if we have been transformed, then everything in us is transformed. The way we used to see things is now different. If we regarded people after the flesh, we now regard them after the spirit that is within them, the holiness that is within them. Like when I look around the room, I want to see the holiness that is within you. When you look around the room, you regard no man or woman after the flesh, but the glory that is within them. And we should treat one another with that in mind. We now live for others and not for ourselves. We pursue things of God and what his will is, like Mel spoke about so beautifully last week. We are now obedient to Christ and his ways and not our ways. And it's his power we use and not our own. You see, the old creature was full of pride. The new creature is humble. The old creature was a lover of sin. The new is free from sin. The old um, did religious works to please, but the new is driven by love and compassion. The old had bad habits and passions. The new is living to be an example. The old was self-promoting and, justi and justifying. The old was made holy and righteous and justified. You know, now we live by the Spirit. Like, I was, I was saved, but I wasn't living 
by the Spirit. I was, I was just existing. I didn't have life. I was just existing. And because I didn't have the Spirit within me, I allowed myself to go down some dark places. Without the Spirit of God within us, we are dead. We are dead. We need the Spirit of God to be within us, to make us alive to what God has got for us, this beautiful life that he's given to us, that he's breathed into us. In Ephesians 4.23, it says this, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God to, in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. For we are all members of one body. And, and yes, we, we have been justified, but we are being glorified day by day. Each day we are becoming more and more glorified when we are in Christ. And that, when it says there, uh, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness, we are getting to that state that we would be a completely new being in heaven. So our earthly state is dying, but actually we are growing in our glory from day to day. So that one day we'll be fully glorified. We'll be fully in God's presence. You getting me? Um, You know, Jesus came like us. He died, but he also was raised again. We are raised with Christ. We become like him because we are raised with him. And our perspective changes. You know, like Paul, when he was on the road, he, gets, he, he, he believed that he was doing the right thing. He, he believed he was doing the right thing. And along the way, he encountered God, and he was blinded to his old way, and his eyes were opened, if you know the story, to a new way. He completely changed when he encountered Jesus. The same applies to us. If you, if you feel like you have not changed who you are, I want to challenge you this morning. Allow yourself to be encountered by Jesus. That encounter with Jesus is going to change you. It's, you're going to be a different person. You're going to be a way better person. I'll tell you what, I'm a way better person than what I used to be like only because of what Jesus has done for me through his spirit. Seriously. You know, when, when people come to know, well, before they come to know Jesus, they say, oh, I'm going to lose out on so much. What about all my friends? The things that I used to do, I can't do anymore and whatever. It's like, yeah, absolutely. It's a good thing, but really, it's, a, it's an amazing thing that you can be transformed by him. You know, Jesus, Jesus was not Adam. He didn't fail. He gained full victory. In Jesus, all are, be, are blessed. All are made one in him. All are made children and heirs and have a great inheritance in Christ. And all are reconciled to God. Jesus came so that we could be reconciled to God. We can come back into God's presence. We can be one with him. We can be in right standing with him. We are made righteous by Jesus. But it's only in Jesus that we have that. Our life should now be about showing our gratitude to Jesus, but that the world would see it. I want to spend some time ministering this morning. So to be in Christ has a whole lot of meanings. But being in Christ, you are a new creation. You are something new. 
you are on the road to be fully glorified when you're in Christ. You might be partially glorified now, but one day you'll be fully glorified as you continue along this journey. So if you are like me, or have been like me, when you were one way, and you feel like, I'm not changed. I still feel the same. I still carry this, this resentment, this anger, this uh, frustration, whatever it is that you, you still feel like you carry it. You know that, that Jesus wants to transform you so that you don't feel that anymore? So that you would be set free from that? If you have that frustration, I'm, I'm going to ask you to be really bold to set aside the old ways, the foolish ways, the ways that you have tried so hard to get over yourself and come to the signpost, which is the cross, to find refuge in, in Jesus, to come to him so that you would be fully transformed by the Spirit of God.